Now meet the Carmel king of the castle, keeping his tight CL smooth, sipping on Spritite. It's the Mechadon never swerving untitled, uh, knowing commercial rap needs to woo, be recycled. Uh, yeah. Collecting cans for Nick's picks, my latest uh, LP. There's a little story that must be told about two players rocking on the ice and gold. They try to slow us down mm. from laying the law. But we kept it real, we just playing it all. Pushed up on our ladies, spoke on our name. But Bill Cass never get caught in uh -uh. the game. You can tell by how I display my verse, I obey my thirst. Stick with the rhyme, it's right, you can say it's my nurse. I'm from the go, leave it to Roe Beast Hurt. Mac 10, gotta fight the Roe Beast tonight. Keep it tight and obey my thirst with Sprite. It's Kobe and Tim, both games are tight. Grabbing points like they grab a Sprite. Game action like moving stunts. Obeying it first with Missy scoring points. Stay, obey your thirst. Hey yo, Chris, what's up, love? What's that in your hand? It's an S to the B R I T E can. Understand the cross, Chris drinks the crazy, crazy twist of unexpectedness that you should never miss. Uh, KRS one comes with strike two when Shan is through. Second strike, Shan sees triple sprites within his eyesight. At strike three, lyrical verse dispersed to obey your thirst. Recently, I made a video on how a malt liquor company by the name of St. Ides changed rap history and I really wasn't expecting that video to do the numbers that it did. It's always the videos that you don't think that will do well that exceed your expectations. But in that video, I mentioned that I could possibly look into Sprite's history with rap. I got an overwhelming amount of people requesting me to do that video, so here I am today bringing this content to you guys because this is another interesting topic. Before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys could be doing a million other things right now, but instead, you're here with me and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too. That would be greatly appreciated. You guys can always reach out and just show me some love. It's all good. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from. Represent where you're from. Let me know some of your favorite Sprite commercials and ads from now or back in the day in the comments. While I was doing research for this video, I came across this alleged Sprite curse. So definitely let me know if you would like to see a full breakdown on that. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Before we get into Rap's connection with Sprite, I should give a little background history on the Sprite company itself. Sprite was actually originally developed in West Germany in 1959. The drink was started as part of the Fanta line with the name Clear Lemon Fanta. Two years later, the drink would be introduced to the US market with its new name, Sprite. The name Sprite had been around at the Coca-Cola company for many years because during the 1940s, the character of Sprite Boy made regular appearances in Coke marketing. The figure was dropped from advertising in 1958, but when Sprite came to the US, the name Sprite was reintroduced. Sprite was officially introduced to the US in 1961 and rapidly gained popularity. One thing that the brand has always done was have a following that was heavily oriented toward the US the market. By the 1980s, Sprite had been competing with 7up, which is owned by Keurig Dr. Pepper in the United States. Sprite is owned by the Coca-Cola company. 7up already had a deep history in the United States with them forming all the way back in 1929. But like I said earlier, Coca-Cola and Sprite decided to focus on the youth market and rap and hip hop culture was something that was growing in popularity in the 80s. The African American ad agency Burrell Communications would get rap acts for a series of spots that began a long-lasting relationship between the brand and the culture. 
This would start with Curtis Blow in 1986. It was one of the first national TV ads to feature a rapper at the time. This was around the same time that Run DMC would have their famous deal with Adidas, which was also monumental. There were some people in my St. Ides video saying that Run DMC never had a deal with Adidas, which is completely false and it can easily be looked up and just research. But back to Curtis Blow and him being one of the first national TV ads to feature a rapper makes sense. He was the first rapper signed to a major label, which was Mercury Records, was the first rapper to have a certified keyword certified gold rap record and is regarded to be one of if not the first rap superstar he also starred in the movie crush groove in 1995 that was a success so this definitely makes sense to ask why he was the guy to start kicking off the rap sprite connection so curtis blow was the one to kick the door down but it wouldn't be until 1990 when sprite kicked off their i like the sprite in you campaign with heavy d heavy d and the boys kicked off this campaign and they were big at this time by 1990 with two albums under their belt with their album Big Time which was released in 1989 going platinum that very same year right before the Sprite ad came out. The very next year is when the group Kid and Play was tapped to do a Sprite commercial. By 1991, Kid and Play had a gold album with their debut album Too Hype, which released in 1988, and in 1990, they released their classic and wildly successful movie, House Party. The film had an estimated $2.5 million budget and made $26.4 million at the box office. They also had their own NBC Saturday morning cartoon at this time. It's obviously very understandable why they were tapped for this ad. But in 1993, the group Criss Cross would appear in an ad with Sprite, and this was coming off of their debut album, Totally Crossed Out, dropping in March of 1992 and peaking at number one on the Billboard 200. Their mega hit single, Jump, topped the Billboard Hot 100 for eight straight weeks, which was followed up by their other single, Warm It Up, which peaked at number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. But after this ad, there would be a shift in the direction of Sprite's campaigns involving rap and the hip-hop culture. Sprite had decided to deepen the exploration of their relationship with hip-hop. They wanted to get artists not based on their popularity, but those that had an underground following and were seen as quote-unquote respected urban soothsayers at the time. This was because their aim was to represent their understanding of the genre and, in turn, the community. The thing Sprite did differently was that it didn't go after the most well-known artists or celebrities. They went to artists who had an appreciation of the culture and the commercials had an authentic tone. Sprite struck a chord with the artist so that when the next series of commercials ran, the next artist would say yes and they connected with the brand. This was said by Jamal Booker, who was the manager of Heritage Communications at Coca-Cola. This would lead to their Obey Your Thirst campaign. A man by the name of Daryl Colbin, I think that's how you say it, Daryl Colbin, who at the time was a young brand manager, had the idea for a new direction away from marketing taste and towards marketing attitude. We would see this with people like Grand Poobah and Large Professor in A Tribe Called Quest doing ads in 1994. This was obviously a notable shift from people like Curtis Blow, Heavy D and the Boys, and Criss Cross. You have Grand Poobah and Large Professor. Large Professor is a legendary producer who by 1999 had done production for people like Main Source, Eric B and Rakim, Nas, etc. The list pretty much goes on. Grand Poobah was a part of the legendary rap group Brand Nubian, but also was respected as a solo MC. While doing my research, I actually ran across some information that it's rumored that Grand Poobah actually coined the slogan Obey Your Thirst during a rehearsal for the commercial. If this is true, the Sprite definitely better be giving that man a check because they ran with that slogan four years. But now to a tribe called Quest, and by 1994, they had three albums under their belt. The Low End Theory and Midnight Marauders was gold by then. 
definitely a good pick for an ad at this time and their ad is really dope to me it definitely stood out to me but i also really like a tribe called quest so there's that then there was an ad with cl smooth and pete rock in 1995 i believe while reading up on this i guess it had long been said that during the making of this commercial a rift began to emerge between the duo things allegedly bowled over during the shoot and the two eventually broke up after this ad and if you guys want that sprite curse video i would obviously go more in depth with like situations like the cl smooth and pete rock thing but in 1996 we would see one of my favorite sprite ads with krs1 and mc shan called rhyme for rhyme now the condensed backstory behind this ad is that back in the day i guess even somewhat now today krs1 and mc shan haven't gotten along back during the early stages of hip-hop there was a man by the name of mr magic who was a very prominent dj who played hip-hop music he was the guy back then and upcoming artists just like krs1 at the time were trying to bring their records to mr magic to get him to play it mr magic ended up not really giving krs1 the time of day which led to resentment from krs1 and him and his people down the line got the impression that mr magic said that their tape was garbage. In response to this, KRS One thought that MC Shan, who was a part of the Juice Crew in which Mr. Magic was supporting at this time, was whack. This led to KRS One writing the start to the song South Bronx in response to MC Shan's song The Bridge, because Shan was repping Queens Bridge and KRS One took issue with some lyrics in this song. But MC Shan's response to the song South Bronx would be his song kill that noise in response to kill that noise krs1 came with the response of the bridge is over but skip ahead to 1996 when the sprite commercial was done and according to mc shan that sprite commercial was the first time the two men had come face to face in battle here's what mc shan had to say in all reality that is actually the only time that me and chris have been put in a battle situation on stage we have never actually gone head to head like he got the mic then i got the mic the way we did in that sprite commercial we were having fun i can tell you that we were having fun me and chris were interacting with each other making jokes i still have the footage from behind the scenes at the sprite commercial we were just having a good time but speaking of queens we would see nas and az appear in a sprite commercial in 1997 by this time in 1997 nas had released two classic albums with illmatic releasing in april of 1994 and it was written was released in july of 1996 AZ was in the group The Firm with Nas at this time, with The Firm releasing their debut album in 1997. AZ had a standout verse on Nas' song Life's a B on Illmatic, and AZ's debut album Do or Die was received very well. The Lost Boys would also appear in a Sprite ad in 1997, and according to Vibe Magazine, by the late 90s, Sprite had spent roughly $70 million on the A Beggar Thirst campaign, tripled their sales, and commanded a majority market share of the Citrus category, which also included 7UP, Sierra Mist, and Mountain Dew. In 1998, we would see a dope ad with rap legends Grandmaster Kaz and Missy Elliott, along with basketball legends Tim Dunn and Kobe Bryant but after this ad we will see another shift in how the ads were done they would have the Voltron series which represented all hip-hop regions this explored the relationship between the hip-hop culture and comics the people that I know who are part of these ads was the goody mob from the south common from the Midwest Fat Joe from the East, Mac-10 from the West Coast, and Africa Bambada from the East, and they all came together to form Voltron. Sprite would switch it up in 1999 when they did the Five Deadly Venom series, which explored the relationship between the hip-hop culture and martial arts with female artists. The Five Deadly Venom series is based on a movie that was released in the US in 1978, which is about a dying master who enlists his final student to check on the activity of his five former pupils. 
each of whom possess unique forms of kung fu with unique styles which are the centipede, the snake or viper, the scorpion, the lizard, and the toad. This is a reference to the five poisonous creatures of Chinese folklore, but from what I've managed to look up, there is no lizard in the five poisonous creatures of Chinese folklore, and instead it's spiders. But the sprite ads had five female artists with Eve, who represented Blonde B, Angie Martinez represented Firefly, Mia X represented Ladybug, Emil represented Praying Mantis, Roxanne Chate represented the Black Widow, and the villain was Cool Keith. The standout name from this is Roxanne Chante because she is a pioneer when it comes to female rappers and she played a similar role to how Africa Bambada was in the Voltron ads. Cool Keith being the villain was a good touch in my opinion and led to some very entertaining ads. The interesting thing that I found out about these ads is that according to Beats by the Pound, who was the in-house production team for No Limit Records at a point in time, said that Roxanne Shante and Mia X were the only ones who wrote their verses in the studio. They said that everybody else had to leave and come back or wait for their writers to come. Now, like I said, this is what Beats by the Pound said in an interview with Be High. But nonetheless, these ads were really dope. Something else I've seen Sprite do in the 90s was hold Sprite Nights, where I'm pretty sure it was like a collaboration with BET. I was trying to find out info of this, but there's like clips online of these Sprite Nights, and I managed to find videos of 1997 and 1998. Various artists at that time would perform with notable names like Outkast, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Red Man, Curtis Blow, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, etc. Now we get to the 2000s and something that happened a few years ago was that a Mo's Def and Jay Dilla Sprite commercial resurfaced from the year of 2000. Beanie Siegel actually makes an appearance in the video for this ad. Mo's Def raps over a rare Jay Dilla beat and it's awesome, check it out. Me and my shorty pay a visit to the local Chula district. Sell click behind the counter thinking these two look suspicious. When the cops start chirping on a walkie talkie surface like it's probably a scam. Before we even make a purchase, this style is so play, but Duke is so okay. I don't drink from your woke, cause my thirst is so I'm a sparkle at the top like all the bubbles in the sprite. Smoke your ice and pop the speakers and all them stereotypes. This ad would be a part of a new campaign Sprite was doing called What Are You Thinking that featured artists in scenarios where people and their own prejudices and issues with racial stereotypes were examined. The campaign had people like Mo's Def, Beanie Siegel, and Pharaoh Mach. The ad seemed to be very hard to come by with me not being able to find Beanie or Pharaoh Mach's ad at all. Like I said, Mo's Def's and Jay Dilla's ad just resurfaced only a couple of years ago. After this, it was really hard to find all of the rap-related Sprite ads from 2000 to 2010. The ones that I came across was when Biz Marquee, Diddy, and the Neptunes appeared in Sprite Remix commercials in 2003. They had a character by the name of Miles Thirst who appeared in Sprite ads around 2004 and had a chain, big afro, and dark shades. His commercial spots were hilarious from what I've seen, especially his commercials with LeBron. But yeah, from like 2005, to 2009, I really couldn't find anything of note that involved rap and Sprite. I could be wrong and I'm sure that I might get comments about it, but I'm not here to like list every single like Sprite commercial that has ever been done. In 2010 though, we would see Sprite embark on a new campaign that was quote unquote designed to empower teens to play, experience, and interact with the Sprite brand and feel their creativity come to life. The Spark campaign also takes its name from from Sprite's at the time newly updated Spark logo. The campaign was set to launch in markets around the world in 2010 and across four continents including Europe, North America, Africa, and Asia. The first TV commercial for the Spark titled Unleashed featured Drake who in the ad was struggling to find inspiration in the song while recording his hit single Forever. The commercial made its TV debut during the pre-game telecast of Super Bowl 44. I really remember this ad from growing up and man like yo like this ad came on all the time as a kid. This was back when I was a huge Drake fan and I thought that this was like the dopest commercial ever. Why Drake was a part of this campaign makes complete sense because by 2010, Drake had released a slew of mixtapes with his most successful one at the time being So Far Gone, which released in February of 2009. 
This mixtape had the songs Best I Ever Had, which peaked at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100, and Successful, which peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. He also appeared on the We Are Young Money compilation album, which had hits with him on it, like Bedrock and Every Girl. He also appeared on the song Forever, which appears in the Unleashed ad, which was another really big song. Drake's debut album didn't come out until after the commercial, but by that time, Drake was one of the hottest rising rappers in the game, and we would see Drake obviously merge into being a megastar over the years, so he was definitely a good pick, no doubt, especially for their first global marketing campaign. Some years would pass though, and in 2015, Sprite would come with their Obey Your Verse campaign, which was a lyrical collection that featured inspirational lyrics from rap legends like Drake, Nas, Biggie Smalls, and Rakim. It's pretty obvious why these artists were selected, but these artists were selected based on their reputation for being true to themselves through their music and advancing the culture. Kimberly Page, who at the time was the vice president of Sprite Brands and Flavors of Coca-Cola, in North America had this to say about the campaign. Sprite recognized and respected the power of hip hop early and it became a part of the brand's essence decades ago. By honoring and recognizing great lyricism from some of the genre's biggest icons on our product packaging, we're demonstrating how Sprite continues to support hip hop artists that remain true to themselves. Isaiah Rashad would also be tied to Sprite in 2015 where he has an Obey Your Thirst documentary presented by Fader. You can easily watch this via YouTube. Sprite would actually continue with their Obey Your Verse campaign in 2016 with Missy Elliott, Tupac, and J. Cole. Bobby Oliver, who at this time was the director of Sprite and Citrus brands of Coca-Cola North America, had this to say about the campaign. From the moment Sprite tapped into hip-hop culture 30 years ago with our ad featuring Curtis Blow, the brand has strived to celebrate self-expression and provide artists with platforms to tell their most moving stories. The Sprite Obey Your Verse lyrical collection is not only an acknowledgement of the genre's best storytellers, but also a way of inspiring and empowering our fans to be true to themselves. The very next year in 2017, Sprite would call upon people like Lil Yachty, Vin Staples, Drum, Vic Minta, Kamaya, and Cap G for the Summer Sprite Cold Lyrics series. People at Sprite were really excited about the performance of the first two Obey Your Verse campaigns and noted that it was very strategic on how they evolved this program to build off of their previous successes while getting deeper into the relevancy to their fans. Bobby Oliver also delivered another good quote about Sprite's relationship with hip hop. It's a two way relationship that we have with hip hop. We don't think of it as we're taking a corporate campaign and fusing it into hip hop. What we wanted to do is we recognize hip hop's popularity and the fact the artists in that genre are really looking to just express themselves and stay true to who they are. They have a voice and they have a point of view that nobody was paying attention to and Sprite just felt like, hey, we can help give you a platform from which you can express that. And so it was a mutually beneficial partnership in terms of just wanting to help other people elevate themselves to be able to express themselves, stay true to who they are and what they believe because we all have a voice and everybody deserves to be heard. It's not about a corporate marketing gig or anything in that nature. It's about how do we stay true to what hip hop was meant to be, what it originally meant to our fans and just provide that platform for them to enjoy it. In 2019, we would see Sprite launch their Thirst for Yours campaign, which was a multi-year platform designed to highlight musicians, designers, artists, photographers, and more. Atlanta rapper Cody Shane would appear in the video ads, which I happen to see all of the time as well, and she was hand-selected by Sprite. Sprite also put its audience in control of the next generation of creators through Spriteway, which was a community-led platform and playlist series that highlighted unsigned artists through fan submissions. 2020 would come around and Sprite would collaborate with five of hip hop's most influential voices to support community partners they believed were doing their best work to serve and support creators and communities disproportionately affected by COVID-19 and racial inequality. This collaboration was with Street Execs, 
2 Chains, Metro Boomin, Cam Kirk, Molly Hunter, and Wish Atlanta. Now we get to present time in 2022, where Sprite tapped Grammy-winning producer James Blake to shine limelight on diverse artists, and one of the artists would be Koi LeRae. Now to my generation, we know her as Koi LeRae, but to my older audience, they would know her as Benzino's daughter. So yeah, like that might like ring a bell. But the Sprite Global brand director would say, Sprite Limelight provides a unique opportunity for fans to experience new music through one hook reimagined three different ways. It also offers a window into the way they make music as well as their own personal experiences connected to our core brand philosophy of staying cool in those moments when life's heat feels intense and bringing very different artists from around the world together around one musical expression Based on a shared life experience, we hope to connect music fans across cultures and borders. So this will pretty much end me talking about the more notable Sprite ads that are rap and hip hop related throughout the years. From Curtis Blow to Coil the Ray, I pretty much just covered the TV ads, but I've heard people like did like radio ads throughout the years. Like Rakim is one person who I heard was doing radio ads in the early 2000s. Now as to why you might ask why I titled the video the way that I did, well Sprite and Hip Hop both elevated each other to become more popular as I've noted and took each other to new heights. Like I said, in the 90s, it was reported that Sprite has spent roughly $70 million on their Obeger Thirst campaign, which in tune tripled their sales and commanded a majority market share of the citrus category, which also included 7up, Sierra Mist, and Mountain Dew. Rap helped them do that and it brought these rappers to a wider audience audience due to how big Sprite was as a company. Rap was something that began to get popular in the 1980s and Sprite went ahead and got Curtis Blow who's regarded as one of rap's first superstars. Sprite would have many successful campaigns involving rap and the hip hop culture. Their first global marketing campaign involved Drake who is now one of the most popular and best selling rappers of all time. This was a global campaign which is really huge. This was in 2010, but by 2017, rap was officially the most popular music genre. I think Sprite definitely had a hand in that. One last thing I wanna say is that me personally, Sprite is one of my favorite drinks, but my favorite drink is water. Definitely drink water. Everything is good in moderation. A Sprite every now and then, you know, it won't kill you. But just saying, man, drink water, especially it's hot outside. No, definitely drink water. Stay hydrated. Get the body right. All that good stuff. But all in all, let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section below. Let me know if you want to see that Sprite curse video as well. I love you guys with all my heart. Peace.